Hi, this is Jack Lufton and Critical Materials Corner. And today I'm going to speak with Ed Richardson, the president of Thomas & Skinner, a company that's been making rare, rare earth permanent magnets in the past and permanent magnets in general for over a century. Ed, can you tell us something about Thomas & Skinner, a brief history of, of your company? Sure. Um... Well, thanks for having me on, Jack. Uh, it's great to talk to you, as always. Um, Thomas & Skinner has been around since 1901. We were started by a professor at Purdue University around the turn of the century, um, uh, around 1901, if you think about it. Electricity was becoming available, but there weren't a lot of devices that could use electricity. So the research and development that was happening in the, at the universities was around magnetic materials. Magnetic materials are often the bridge between electricity as a power source and whatever work you're trying to do. So uh, uh, the professor came up with some different materials, started manufacturing them and created a, a, a magnet company. Over the years, we have evolved into making uh, uh, different uh, types of magnetic materials. Um, we make the permanent magnet uh, Alnico, but we have also made rare earth magnets as you alluded to. Uh, we've made some aram cobalt. We've made neo. Um, so we've uh, seen a little bit of everything uh, during the 120 years. You no, know, when your company first made rare earth permanent magnets. Yeah. So uh, in the late 80s, there were a lot of companies that jumped in this space uh, in the rare earth space. Uh, some making some aram cobalt, some making centered neodymium iron boron. Um, Sumitomo had developed. Um, was one of the companies that developed Center Neo, but they weren't enforcing their patents. And then uh, after a while, they came around and said, hey, if you're going to do this, uh, you got to pay us. And so most companies uh, jumped out. There were others that did get a license from Sumitomo, uh, but over the course of time, then um, in North America, at least, those companies went out of business. <laughs> now, when, when did you stop making rare earth permanent magnets? at Thomas and Skinner? Uh, probably around uh, 1992, 1993. And why was that? Uh, well, um, uh, we wanted to focus on Alnico, uh, Neo. Um, we didn't want to buy a license and it was becoming very competitive. The Chinese were, were coming in. Uh, they had all of the raw materials. Um, so it was becoming very competitive. Um, and we just decided to, to step away from that and okay. focus on things that we thought we could be more successful at. Now, I know the answer to my next question, <laughs> but I want you to tell me. Uh, why aren't, or, or is Thomas and Skidder looking to get back into the production of rare earth permanent magnets with all of the emphasis now coming from the U.S. federal government? You know, we have, we've talked about it. Um, the challenge, though, is uh, with the patents. Uh, I talked about Sumitomo and the patents that they had filed. Um, similar to a pharmaceutical in this, uh, pharmaceutical company, they filed a whole portfolio of patents. Um, and so there are hundreds, literally hundreds of, of patents uh, on making centered neodymium iron boron. And... Um, they are not, uh, well, Sumitomo eventually sold their business to Hitachi Metals. So Hitachi mm -hmm. now owns the Sumitomo port, uh, patent portfolio. Mm -hmm. And Hitachi has chosen not to license anyone to make Center Neo in North America. Um, so if you were one of those original license holders, um, you uh, still have that license. But uh, in terms of when Hitachi uh, has taken over. Uh, they're not licensing anyone new. So if we wanted to get back into it, we would need to get a, a, a license to produce from Hitachi. We have asked them for that and they've declined. Um, Just for your information, uh, and I'm sure you know this, Hitachi Metals has been sold uh, to the, and the purchaser is the Bain Corporation, the American uh, company. And uh, they've told me that they won't be able to close on that deal until sometime next year. And until then, uh, they can't possibly be involved in any sub-licensing from the Hitachi Magnetic Subdivision of Hitachi Metals. So even if you wanted to and had 
all kinds of money, right. nothing would be happening next year. So, which leads me to the, the real important question here, Ed. Do you, do you think that the, there's going to be an American rare earth permanent magnet industry capable of supplying the, the needs of the North American market anytime soon or no. ever? No, no. Uh, first off, the, the, the Chinese aren't going away. So even if you were to get a license from Hitachi to produce, the Chinese are still formidable uh, competitors. Uh, they own a, a huge advantage in terms of raw materials, labor costs. Uh, uh, they're getting money from their government. So there's all kinds of reasons why the Chinese are, are, are uh, so competitive in this space. Um, and, and quite frankly, there are just some areas that, that most companies like us don't even want to go after. Um, uh, for instance, automotive. There's a lot of chatter about automotive, a lot of chatter about wind turbines, um, but I don't really see that as, as, as markets that are even open to a North American producer. Um, companies that buy magnets for those uh, industries are looking for the lowest global price, and U.S. producers will never be the lowest global price uh, for producing center NEO. I've spoken to uh, mm -hmm. Europeans in this uh, space as recently as this morning, and they think th they're going to make rare earth permanent magnets there for their automotive industry. I find that hard to believe. Okay. <laughs> uh, I know they, they may want to do that, but again, how are they going to compete with uh, automobile manufacturers that are getting their raw materials or, or magnets from, from China? Um, without subsidies, hard to believe. they can't. Without yeah. subsidies, they can't. That's right. That's true. And um, I have to say that I, I pretty much agree with with all of your conclusions. And I, you, and I also know that people who actually know what they're talking about are shunned by <laughs> those in, in elected office. So <laughs> we just keep talking. I re I recall that you and I testified before a congressional committee years ago about about this topic, magnets, mm -hmm. and that afterwards the our host told me that I was banned forever from testifying before Congress because I kept telling the truth, which is not what they wanted to hear. So, <laughs> in, in any case, uh, you have, you told me on a visit I made to your plant about five years ago that you, you would not, you could build a, a, a neodymium iron boron centered magnet plant uh, again, reconstruct the one you had. If I could guarantee you a supply of raw materials at metals and alloys at competitive prices and guaranteed you a customer who would allow you to sell at a profit. Right. And so that, that sounds like a pretty uh, straightforward answer to, to, to going into any business. And so you, you, are, you are currently a supplier to the Defense Department of yep. Magnets, yes? And yes. those those are um, those are sourced from those are supposed to be sourced in the United States. Correct. Now, I I'd like you to just tell me if I know what I'm talking about about a story I heard. Um, it's clear that nobody in the United States is manufacturing neodymium iron boron magnets yet, and and yet and we know that maybe ninety percent plus of such magnets are manufactured in China. Yet the people at a, a large defense manufacturing operation in Texas who make fighter planes tell me that well uh, we get our magnets from Japan and Israel. Uh, I've been told that the Israelis <laughs> buy their magnets from Japan, which buys their magnets from China, and they, they I don't know if this is a good term to use in case of Israel, they baptize them as non-Chinese. Now, isn't it, isn't it sort of obvious that the Defense Department knows all of these games and tricks? Y yes, uh, and they may be trying to be willfully ignorant, um, yeah. but, uh, you know, there's a lot of, of key terms that, that you have to, to nail down. Number one, you have to define what does produce mean? Um, uh, when we worked on the specialty metals clause, 
Um, we narrowed the definition of produce down to meaning that you can melt the alloy, right? Mm -hmm. so if you can melt the alloy, you are producing a metal. Um, if you are melting centered neodymium iron boron, or at least the alloy for making that, um, that is a rather involved process. Um, and then you've got to turn that into a powder that you can, that you can press. Um, uh, I can tell you that Israel does not have a magnet company uh, within its borders. Um, Japan does have the capability of making, um, producing center neodymium iron boron, and yet they get all their raw materials from China. They are, they are dependent on other companies, or countries, I should say, um, and they are, they are tied very closely to China. And I can also tell you that Japan, the, the companies in Japan that produce center neodymium iron boron have been shifting their production more and more to China. And they have JVs with China, they've been transferring technology and they've been tra transferring manufacturing plants in exchange for access to raw materials from China. Um, so the amount that is actually produced in Japan is decreasing, their reliance on China is increasing. Um, and I think it's uh, a willful naivete to think that, that Japan is somehow independent of China or that production in Japan is somehow uh, not tainted uh, by uh, Chinese uh, production. It, Japan is very, very dependent on China. Um, and if you're, if you're getting um, magnets from Japan, those materials are coming from China. Those raw materials are coming from China. No, I, I think I, I understand that completely. So the, you're aware that the Defense Department is talking about they want the final uh, aspect of any part they, they need produced in the United States. Like they want, they, want uh, they say, they want rare earth permanent magnet motors assembled in the United States. They want rare earth permanent magnets uh, assembled into the, the components of the United States. Um, is there any, I'm not aware of anybody in the United States currently uh, that's manufacturing neodymium iron boron magnets. And, and I'm only aware of, I believe you're, uh, not really your competitor, but Electron Energy in Pennsylvania, which is making samarium cobalt magnets, but I understand that they are currently, they buy their samarium from China, obviously. And so uh, I don't see how they can say that they're independent uh, either. They are, they are making their own alloys though. They are melting um, their own alloys and that's uh, a, key, a key step that they do uh, have. Um, and so that does, uh, make them somewhat independent. They also, my understanding is they buy uh, a lot of inventory and hold it to create a buffer. Um, samarium is one of those elements that's not in short supply. It's okay. actually in oversupply. Um, so you don't hear much about samarium because there's a lot of it, more than we typically use, uh, at least in magnet production. Are, are um, you aware of the fact that the uh, largest Chinese magnet company has announced it's doubling its production of rare earth permanent magnets in the next two or three years. Yeah, the expansion of capacity for making magnets has been going on for, I would say, the last 10 years in China. Uh, they see it as a, a key industry for them in their future. And so they have incentivized um, companies to invest and they have uh, built a, a tremendous amount of capacity and continue to do so. My, my opinion, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that they're doing that it, it, because they see their domestic demand uh, going up very high for very cars, uh, <coughs> domestic uh, reproduction of energy, you know, by alternate means, etc. And so I don't think that they're doing this to promote an export market. I think they're doing it to, to ensure that their domestic consumption needs can be met. Absolutely, absolutely. But I think you could also say it sends a message to anyone who's thinking about getting into production 
uh, that China is a, a, a willing um, and very aggressive investor in capacity. And so any investment in, in capacity outside of China is going to be met with uh, a lot of uh, low price production. Uh, but you're exactly right. China is uh, investing to um, to consume it themselves. They are ahead of the rest of the world in terms of the use of electrical devices. For instance, electric bikes are much more common in China than they are here. They are much more developed in their use um, and they're, uh, they're everywhere uh, in China uh, where they're just starting to be seen here in the United States and in Western developed countries. Um, and I, and I think uh, because of their advantages, I think they are very eager to um, use electric motors in, in, uh, in devices. So their trains are electric, uh, uh, their bikes are electric. I think they are very, very anxious to um, create the electric automobile industry. Mm -hmm. um, and they not only have demand, but they have a pollution problem. Um, so they have consumers that want uh, automobiles and they have a pollution problem that they want to get rid of. So moving to electric vehicles would be very beneficial to them. I, so I think they're, they're, they're building to meet that, that uh, future uh, demand. One, one last question. Mm -hmm. it, it, it turns out the Chinese lately have been importing a lot of rare earth raw materials, up to 40% of their needs. And this is quite a dramatic change over the last decade or so. Um, do you think there's any chance that the Chinese will run short of raw materials? No, I think it's a very shrewd move by themselves uh, to, to get uh, supplies from other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, uh, uh, it keeps other people from getting into uh, the, the production of, of uh, products using those raw materials, but also it keeps them from using up all of theirs. I don't think they're uh, have a or facing a danger of running out. They have a vast supply in the Baotou region. Um, but uh, why use up all that you have when you can easily get uh, what the rest of the world has well, and use theirs first? Ed, you must be right because I'm of the same opinion and great <laughs> minds think alike. Listen, I, I want to thank you very much for this conversation. And we're going to keep in touch as the U.S. rare earth permanent magnet industry progresses or doesn't. So great. Thanks a lot. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Jack.